Good morning dear friends, welcome back to my channel, it's Belinda here from Visualize NZ and boy do I have a treat for you today. Uh, the amazing Michelle from the Junk Journal Studio has been at it again and made the most stunning kit. Um, I'm going to do a bit of raving because I am just so in love, which is perfect timing because it, it does lend itself to Valentine's but it's not a Valentine's kit per se absolutely works with valentine's but it works with nature it works with vintage it works with shabby chic it works you know it works with so many themes i'm sure you will find something that you love in it so this is the kit that's available on etsy right now it only went up a day or two ago or maybe three i don't know time's passing so quickly but there are also freebies so stay tuned to find out about the freebies because there are 52 pages of freebies that Michelle is offering to you guys. Uh, so I'll get to that after this. This is the kit that's available to purchase. The freebies I'll do after this. I'm not doing all 52 pages of the freebies. I'm only doing six um, and I'll explain more later. But the freebies are only free for a limited time. And I will go into more on that when I get to those. So let's take a look at this kit. This is basically ephemera. It's fussy cuts, ephemera, you name it. It's jam-packed, 39 pages of beautiful elements that you can use in your journaling, in your journal making. So let's take a look. Uh, roses. That's the name of the kit, All Things Roses. And it's all about roses. It's stunning. So beautiful florals here. Of course, all roses. And the colours in this kit are really, really pretty. So this is the same page, but in smaller versions. So you get different sizes of each of the ones that appear on the first page. So wherever that happens, you have the original size and then the, the next size. It's actually labelled as a B. So this is page one and this is page one B. I just think her organisation skills of these massive kits are just amazing. Like, yeah, just so cool. So you don't you don't have to worry about whether you've missed a page or not because you can easily check the numbers and say, oh, I'm missing page, da, da, da. I forgot to print that one or I need to print that one again or whatever. Uh, so page two here, it's a gorgeous shoe with, a rose in it and these lovely hands with roses wee birdie i've only just printed this off so please excuse me for picking out little bits that catch my eye because it's like i haven't had a good look through so i'm getting a good look through at the same time as you guys are and i i've just as i printed it out i could see i just love it adore it again page 2b in the smaller sizes so two different sizes typically of each element Page three, love these um, roses in a like a champagne flute style glass. They're super pretty. And three B in the smaller sizes. These single roses are really lovely as well. The the long stem roses. Four more. What do we have? Roses. It's all things roses. Not surprised. And these boxes of roses just gorgeous and 4b again in the smaller sizes so you don't have to worry about printing at half size or quarter size or whatever it's already provided for you in the kit uh, page five we're starting to get a few labels pop up this very interesting roller skate that's super cool um yeah i hadn't noticed that before that's that's really cool really really cool and some lovely, beautiful big roses there. And then 5B with the different sizes. And now we start hitting some of the labels, which are amazing. Uh, these don't all come in different sizes, but this page has the different sizes on it. Just super pretty, very vintagey just gorgeous aesthetic going on and the colors doesn't this give you a really good indication of the colors of the kit beautiful beautiful labels 
and they've got patterns on them subtle patterns very distressed look with the borders um, just so usable for so many different things that's page seven page eight is the same labels but with text on them kind of numbers and words and and lovely fonts and handwriting and just absolutely gorgeous then some more labels or mini journal cards or embellishments to pop on your pieces all those sorts of things again in those gorgeous colors lovely distressing on everything this is uh, page 10 so we have smaller sizes then these lovely ladies in the beautiful frames how adorable are they just so pretty it's page 11 and we've got a smaller size here and then we've got some additional frames here and sort of a gold gold color i'm just in love with this kit these gorgeous things these are beautiful little label well not little they're a good size label um, with the beautiful florals and a bit of text or music or things here and there just lovely so it's page 12 and then page 13 we have some different patterns and some different sizes this one's gorgeous it's like wallpaper or something absolutely stunning and then we have some more labels with some beautiful children and ladies on them and roses of course stunning i just love this kit it's so good michelle you've just like every kit seems to just outdo the last one just amazing uh, some different sizes so this is 14b this is 14 and this is 14b lovely lovely more labels just gorgeous you know if you're familiar with my channel you know i love labels and this kit has an abundance of beautiful labels in multiple sizes so i am thrilled then we have some pockets or um pockets or little envelopes not quite an envelope what am i trying to say it's a pocket we'll just stick with pocket uh library pockets and there's a library card here titled with all things roses which i think is a beautiful touch these beautiful little labels here and then we have five i think from memory five pages of words um, so they're all the same words on each page but in different colors so we have things like roses never tell they show sweet scented roses the beauty of a rose and then we've got words like lovely and loved and again each is in different sizes so we've got three i think three different sizes of the words or phrases and each page has a different uh, variety of little embellishment pieces so this is a lovely peachy color deep peach and then we have them in black and a couple of lovely frames there then we have them in this beautiful pink and some tickets. Love these ticket strips. Going to have to think of a project for those because they are beautiful. And then in this lovely vintage look, creamy with the soft brown edging. Very lovely, very usable across multiple different styles of journal. And some more labels and a framed picture. Then we have this tealy colour, gorgeous, this lovely rose birthday wish card, like a greeting card and some more labels there. This is label heaven as well as rose heaven and everything else, the colours are delightful. So was that five or, I think it was five, five of the words. Then we have some postcards, some faux stamps. Just these vintage images are stunning. Love them. So there's that one. Then there's this one with this rose. And some writing on the back of the postcard there. So you could sandwich these together and make them as a postcard. Or you could use them separately. You know, lots of options available there. Some more faux stamps. Another postcard. And 
these little coupons here which are fun fabulous to add onto your projects faux stamps in a couple of different styles and sizes beautiful little bird there oh, just everything is so pretty love these too these little received labels are fun and some faux stamps again who doesn't love a rose? Roses are just so gorgeous. And then these little, like tea cards, they're more vertical, but use them to decorate your ephemera. Absolutely gorgeous mixture there of roses and ladies. And then some more. So plenty to work with. Beautiful, beautiful. And then this one is 28B, so this is a smaller version of the previous two pages. Uh, all those, we'll just call them mini tea cards or tea cards um, in a smaller size. Aren't they cute? They are just so cute. Then we have a pocket over here, another library style pocket, and a couple of little journal cards or embellishments. However you would like to use them options people options then we've got these lovely this journal belongs to plates here they are super pretty and some i don't know what these are whether these were advertisements or labels it says tulip soap so uh, or whether they were postcards originally i don't know not something that i've or we've had in new zealand that i know of um but they're, they're super pretty and they've got this little like um, stick frame in the shape of a house with a landscape scene in the middle. They're really cool. Very, very cool. And then we have page 31. So there's 39 pages in total, but because a lot of them are labelled, for example, 31B, they've got the B, then we don't get up to the number 39. Hopefully that makes sense. So that is the All Things Roses ephemera kit available on Etsy right now I would recommend that you hop along and grab it because it is an abundance of beautiful things to use absolutely stunning right let's talk about freebies I am going to be making a little simple project, so stay tuned for that as well. I'm going to be using this kit and embellishing with the ephemera kit. Uh, so these are the freebies that are available through my channel. So every member of the design team, including Michelle herself, has a set of freebies available for you. You do need to go to each person's channel in order to access those freebies. So there's a list in the description box of everybody's channel. I don't know when their videos will go up or anything. So I do recommend you subscribe so you can avail yourself of the whole kit. So 52 pages in total. On They are free between, I think they went were available from the 12th, but for me they'll be available from the time you see this video. Until the 29th of February 2024. That's when they're available for free. After that, they are going to go into Etsy's, uh, sorry, into Michelle's Etsy shop. So if you want to grab them free, then you need to hop along to all the design team members' channels and watch a video, find their link, and go grab the freebies. I've got six pages in my freebie. Everyone's got a certain amount of freebies that make up that 52 pages so let's have a look six pages this gorgeous striped patterned page and I've backed it I've backed two of the pages with two of the other pages if that makes sense so I've backed this one with this lovely yellow distressed with this lacy pattern I don't know if you can pick up that lacy pattern on there stunning absolutely stunning then this gorgeous piece with the music paper in the um, 
layered up with the roses, distressed, gorgeous, um, vintagey, just delightful. And I've backed that with this yellow page with little dot diamond dot pattern. I don't know if you can see that. Again, it could be hard seeing it on camera. Might not show up so well. So there's that page. So that's four pages. Then there's this one. Very similar, but different. So this one's got text. This one's got music. And the roses are different sizes. So very complimentary, but different. And then this is my sixth page, which I saw this in some of the ephemera and just the little labels and things as a background. Just really love this page. And this page, I've discovered is fantastic because it doesn't matter which direction you use it in it works in any direction and that is fantastic that just makes it so usable and you don't have to worry you know spend time thinking oh is it upside down it's going to be the right way up so for certain projects where you're flipping something and it's going to be folded in half and you know you don't want like, text upside down or whatever this page would be absolutely perfect for those types of projects. Just going to have a wee sip of my coffee. I've been doing so much talking. So that is my freebie, guys. The link will be down in the description box. Again, I just remind you that it is only available for free until the 29th of February. After which time, the only way you can get it is to purchase the All Things Roses journal page kit. So all the freebies that are available from everybody is the full journal page kit spread across all the design team and Michelle. Okay, any questions, just let me know in comments because, you know, there was a lot of information to impart and I may have, I may have mucked up. So let me know if there's any questions or if I need to clarify anything. Um, Right, let's get into a project, shall we? Hopefully we are, yeah, we're okay on time. So I'm going to start with this page here. I do believe I'm going to make a journal with this kit because it's just divine. This is going to be a page and a signature. And so I'm just going to start by folding it in half. Just so I can know where I'm working to in terms of the, the center line. Just give it a good crease. I have printed these out on presentation paper, which is 100 GSM. It's just got a lovely weight and feel to it. Okay, so we can kind of see, but it will give me a guide. So I'm going to take the this page here, and I'm going to create some pockets, and I'm going to do a matching pair. Okay, so often we put different things front and back. This is going to be a matching pair, give or take. Um, the, what goes in them might be slightly different. So I want to make a corner pocket. And I'm just getting my head around here. I want to do this. So let's go there. I can see my mark. I've already lost it. Where did I go to? Oh, there. I found it again. Hopefully I can actually do this in here. Um, I've lost it again. Maybe I should do it on the other side of the paper where it's plain. That would have been a good idea. There it is. Mm, okay, that's not going to work. Okay, let's revise that. I'm going to rub out my mark. Gosh, it really is so hard to see. It's just kind of like a little shiny spot. Is that it? No. We're off to a great start on this project, aren't we? I'm, I think I'm overthinking things. I'm overcomplicating it. You know, when something you love something so much, you don't want to like do something wrong so let's measure let's try measuring 
so we want to make it probably about four inches let's turn it over and this is going to be back to front so this will work for the other side of the page so four inches and I want it not all the way up to the top so I'm gonna go maybe six inches doesn't really matter I'm just there's no real measurements you know you can't get it wrong essentially if it's too wide or too tall you just trim it down some more right and I'm going to I think this will work if I go across here for what just rule that I don't need to mark it I just need to rule it rule the line to make a pair of pockets and down here it should be all tickety-boo there that was actually a lot easier way to do it wasn't it I do believe so now I should be able to take my guillotine slide that in there cut that bit and I think this journal is going to be like lacy and well embellished that's my feeling on this journal that I haven't even got a cover or anything yet but I just really think it needs to have a journal made it's, it's a must do must do in my to-do list oops it doesn't go right to the corner so let's just make it do that okay so we have hopefully reversible no we don't we have two the same <laughs> how does that work unless we like did an up corner pocket or tuck they actually tucks they're not pockets the tucks um, we could do one up and one down. Actually, you know, why not? That wasn't my plan, but why not? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Now, I did mean to take out some lace, and I forgot. So, I need to pop you on pause. I'm going to go grab my box of lace, and I'll be right back. Sorry about that. That's just a case of things developing as I... Um, as I work on this project right I do think I want to just reinforce the edge of this a little bit so I'm going to ink around it because I want to have this journal nicely vintaged up because I think the kit lends itself to that doesn't have to be you don't have to ink but I think it's going to look lovely inked so let's typically my aesthetic so I'm going to go with that I am going to reinforce that edge that we're going to be tucking things into just to make it a little bit sturdier if I'd thought I should have done this while I was had the camera on pause but never mind we're back into it let's just do it doesn't take too long And I've chosen out my lace as well. I didn't just grab the lace, but I chose out the lace that I thought would be the one I want to use. Rather than sort of fumble through my box for half an hour looking for the right, just the right one. Okay. Come out of there. So when I cut out my ephemera and bits and pieces you have all that white paper left over and I save it all and it comes in very very handy for cases like this so I need two strips the width doesn't matter oops it's very dusty in that bag it collects, collects shrapnel as well from just daily life and I just use it's not the only thing I use these strips for but it is very useful to reinforce those edges so 
So I'm just going to glue it on. Oh, come here, trouble picking things up. My ruler's rattling on my desk, which is a little annoying. So if your paper that you're using is not super strong or sturdy or you have doubts about its longevity and particularly on pockets and things like that, um, then just take a strip of scrap paper and put a, a reinforcing edge on the back. It can even just be a scrap of book page. Works great. Um, I did manage to get some glue on that don't want to glue our pocket closed that wouldn't be so good and then just trim it along the edge there I'm gonna to have to let these dry a little bit because I did get glue on that um, before I stick them down otherwise they will be stuck down all right and this one see I don't know if you can see that I did not end up cutting along the line that I ruled but it was close enough Let's try and not gouge out the glue stick again this time, dearie. What is rattling? It's really annoying me. Maybe it was my knife in my container. So while these dry, I will prepare the things that are going to go into the pockets. We'll start those off because they're also something that needs to dry. Let the glue dry. It's just so handy having these strips of paper available rather than throw them out. Fabulous. I am wasting a bit of glue stick by not uh, cutting it to size first, but hey, it's okay. Right, so let's leave those to dry for a little bit until they're no longer sticky hopefully won't take too long and I'm going to grab out my other backed paper so this one now I've only got one of these and I can't do both things that I want to go in both of the tuck spots so we might only get we probably only do one so I'm going to use this side the reverse side with this beautiful yellow pattern is going to be the writing side and this is going to be our decorative side and I'm going to glue a doily over top. Now this doily happens to have little roses and rosebuds around the edge which was just a happy coincidence. Um, it makes it perfect. So I'm going to glue that on there and I'm going to just glue stick in the middle whoops yep doilies are notoriously annoying to glue because they do eat your glue stick and get sticky everywhere this is why I need to do this so that it has time to dry um, but I'm going to use my tacky glue to go around the outside it's got little fragments from the doily so I'm just going to run glue right around here use whatever doily you have it doesn't have to have roses on it. it doesn't have to be the same size you can use whatever you've got or if you don't have a paper doily um, you could put some lace on or just not do the doily at all just do the the paper layer because the paper is pretty it's beautiful but I just wanted to add some sort of lacy factors now I'm not going to worry about all the little lines here and there I'm going to hit the flowers the bigger areas with some glue and just every here and there just add a little bit, bit of glue I can always slide my tip in and get any that's sort of gaping or being a, a pain. So 
a much nicer day today the sun is shining still cool inside i haven't been outside to see what the weather's uh you know what the temperature's like but it's uh it's not too bad right so i have got a glue line showing hopefully that will disappear as it dries it's a little bit sticky where i gouged out my glue stick right so ideally i would prepare two of these but i would need a second page to fit another doily on and i don't so maybe we'll do something different um in fact why don't we do that what do we want to do do we want to do a journal card oh decisions let's trim off this edge so we got a piece to work with while everything else is drying let's go up here that on top of my rubbish bin okay so we have a lovely lovely piece of paper it's got potential are these dry enough yet that's my second one what about this first one let's try and rub some of that glue off yeah doesn't matter if it's got a little grubby spot because it's not going to be seen So, how big? This is the full height of the page, so I don't want it this big. Um, I think if I take it down to the top of the leaf and make it into a journal card. Top of the leaf, give or take. And then there's another fun scrap there. Set me up. It's got words in with the music, so that tells me which way. Yep, so that's going to be a journal card on that side. Our centre line is here for the signature, so that fits in nicely. I think this one is ready. We're going to now trim it with lace. Or do I want to... No, I'm going to glue it in first, and then I'll trim it with lace. So just my tacky glue. Glue it on two sides. So yes, it's a tack, not a pocket. Typically, tuck is glued on two sides and a pocket three. That's how I differentiate the two. Not that it really matters. It's something that holds a piece of ephemera in our journals. Right. So this lovely, just very delicate lace here, I thought, would be super pretty and it kind of mimics the lace that's used in the design and I didn't want it to be too thick and bulky so that it's too hard to write on the other side I'm just going to cut that there and which glue would I like to use I think I'm going to use my alcohol glue I think the tacky glue would be fine um, for this lace it's very very light lace but the alcohol glue dries really quickly even more quickly than the tacky glue which is pretty quick so let's just oops it's definitely warmer today because my glue is popping out and it's popping out faster than I want it to I'm going to end up with a big blob which is not what I want so let's just get the blob gone and put a line down there before it becomes dumb <laughs> right so just overhanging the edge of the pocket a little bit it's so sweet so sweet right now how's this pocket doing Yes, making grubby marks, I know. But it's not going to be seen. It'll be fine. I'd rather have a grubby mark on the back that's not seen than a sticky patch that's going to stick my 
tuck spot closed. So let's glue this one on. So when the cold snap that we've had, it's been super cold and in that it was quite um, heavy rain overnight and it came down our chimney on top of our fireplace and now the top of our fireplace is quite rusty at the moment just with that surface water it got on it but I also discovered that it um, broke off one of our branches on our nectarine tree which is fully laden with fruit so poor branch is lying on the ground full of fruit I went out and picked some just before and ate one they're not quite ripe but they are still delicious when they're not quite ripe. They're ripe enough to eat without giving you a sore tummy. You know, and they're delicious. They are so, so yummy. Beautiful old-fashioned nectarine with all the flavour. Grown organically. We don't use any sprays or anything. So, you know, you do get bugs and bruises and such like. And it goes off super quickly in, in the heat. They start going mouldy on the tree. So we pick, always pick them early before they're actually fully ripe otherwise we don't get many which is a bit sad so we just pick them and freeze them all down and have them all the way through the year hubby loves to have them with his yogurt stews them up you know can grabs out a container from the freezer stews them up has them with his yogurt and i make crumbles like fruit crumbles with them as well right on there not sure I got glue right to the end there I think it's okay right trim off the excess might need to add a little glue and just glue it to the edge of the page where it overhangs the pocket the lace i'm talking about sorry i wasn't very clear there was i the scissors have got glue on so they're not cutting particularly well right now Right, so there's our lace on our tuck spots. Okay, they can just hang out and dry a little bit. Oh, if I need to go back in and put some glue under these tops and bottoms, I will do that later. They'll be fine for now. Um, right, next step, let's go back to our doily here. I think it's dry enough to proceed. So very simple this, we're going to trim around the edge of our doily. And we're going to turn this into kind of a journaling card kind of thing. Um, journaling spot, I guess, would be perhaps a better term. Little interactive piece that's very decorative as well. So we'll go through the ephemera and choose out something to decorate up the front of it with and then the back will be the writing side. I just thought it would be something a little bit different and pretty and really suit this journal uh, kit from All Things Roses from the Junk Journal Studio. It's just really going to be so pretty. So from the ephemera kit, with all those gorgeous colours, you can kind of get an idea of what the other freebies are going to hold in store from the other creators. I haven't actually looked at them yet. I have unzipped them all, all the files, but I haven't actually looked at them or printed them out yet. I just printed out my freebies and it was like, yeah, I'm going to make a project with my freebie. And then I will... Um, deal with the rest and yeah well see a journal in my future with this kit totally 
Okay, so we have this lovely doily here. You can see the design in behind it. Um, it's got colour, pattern, texture, and you can see the the pattern through the doily because, of course, they're really thin. We have writing space on the back. Now, it is wider than our half page. So if I fold this in half, you know, it doesn't fit on a page. So we do need to fold it in order to fit. But before we actually, yes, I am going to fold it now. So I like to fold in the, where it dips in, I like to go between two of them. And it just helps keep things straight. And it, to me is a logical area to fold it. So I'm just going to go there. Just give that a wee crease. And I need to do that before we decorate. Otherwise I'm going to have something that wraps around. Or it might end on the fold and then be a problem. So fold it first. And that's going to tuck up into our tuck spot, like so. It's going to be super cute. Um, you could also sew in some pages into this and turn it into like a little notebook or something. I'm not. I'm just going to leave it as like a, a little journaling spot that has a little flippy, flappy bit there. And I'm going to decorate this part up. So let's look at the ephemera. Move my stuff aside and... What am I feeling? I'm thinking because I've already got a lot of roses going on, which is the point of the kit. Um, but I'm wanting something with a little bit of a difference. So maybe a lady. Um, just trying to remember where. Like we could put a stamp on there. Throw a stamp. A little bit big. Let's see what else we can. It's got these lovely labels with the ladies on. That's the trouble with me only just looking at it properly with you guys is I'm not overly familiar with everything that's in it yet. These are a little big, I think. Um, but what about the next size down? What about these? And I also think it would be nice to have a splash of colour because it's very much the same colour scheme going on. If we introduced something like this, it could be really nice. Oops, don't put them upside down. Don't need to put them upside down. How about we go with one of those? Just going to go with this first one. Oh yeah. That's going to be super pretty. So bear with me while I cut it out. Um, I might actually go right into the image itself. It's going to take me slightly longer, but not too bad. I'm no speedster like the wonderful Marguerite at Seven Plaza. Or... Rachel at Roxy Creations with their fussy cutting. But I get by. I do enjoy it. I grabbed out my um, scan and cut and used it for the first time the other day. Now it's been sitting on our lounge floor for probably a good three months now. And I finally found a moment to use it and I turned it on and I ran something through it and was a bit disappointed. I think I need to replace the, br the blade on it. It is second hand. It took me like six goes to try and cut something out and it wasn't, wouldn't cut it, wouldn't cut it and then it finally just started to cut it and then um then it came out a bit raggedy. So I think, and I tried different settings and stuff, and yeah. It's all a learning curve for me. I've never used one before, so I thought it would make life easy <laughs> when it comes to fussy cutting. 
but part of me is sad too if I cut everything out using a scanning cart then I miss out on the pleasure of fussy cutting so but it wouldn't actually wouldn't pick everything up either some things didn't have borders it wasn't um wasn't this certainly wasn't this kit it was something else that I was trying it on and the borders weren't being picked up so I only picked up a couple of items from the page that I was trying to cut out as well so even the pages that I did successfully cut some things out of I've still got to go back and hand cut what it, the machine didn't pick up so I don't know if you're a scan and cut user is there a way that you can alter um when it scans, the image it scans, a way you can alter the depth of colour that it picks up or something. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. If you're a scan and cut user, you may be able to interpret what I am trying to say. I know you can alter it digitally, like do it like in Photoshop or something, and then take it back to your scan and cut. But is there a way you can do it on the machine to get it to pick up lighter colours? Anyway, that's an aside. That is going to be super pretty there. Um, I do think I want to layer it up with something. What do we want to layer it up with? A label, of course. Of course we want a label. Fancy one of these ones with text on. Um, what colour do we like? See how beautifully the colours are. Oh. Superb. I think I want this bluey, greeny, tealy colour and not a big one. So I'm going to go this one. These labels are by and large pretty quick and easy to cut out. And last side. And I think that's all we need. I think that is super pretty. Just let the doily speak for itself. I do need to distress around it though. Because it's got all that pretty detail and it's got the roses and rosebuds around the edge of the doily. So we're just decorating up the planar centre. I may want something on the other side where we've folded it around, maybe. We'll take a look at that after we've done this side. We may not have time to do the journal card to go in the other side. Oops, there's a, I thought I had another scrap of paper. So, tacky glue. thinking processing yeah no sometimes you just don't need to do much because things are beautiful just layer a few pieces up and boom you've got a wonderful piece of ephemera not too much fussing around just choose your pieces and glue them on and you have a awesome decorative piece I mean I could add words I could you know I could definitely add more and that's not straight let's that's better it's not perfect but it's it's not quite straight but that's okay that is so pretty I need to distress it because you need to see what it looks like <laughs> This will also help it sort of separate it out a bit more from the background. I will do the other side, but I'll do the other side off camera. Because um, this is the, the bit that's going to be visible. 
for most of the time so I'll take care of this side off camera and I'll do around this bit as well you can see there's the odd spot where I need to go in and put a little bit more glue and that's fine take care of that afterwards as well there we go isn't that gorgeous so yeah we need something in here I think um, do we want to wrap something around? What about a word? If I can find the words. And in that same tealy colour. Sorry for reaching. I know I'm directly under the camera. My arms are. Just a very small desk surface that I'm working with. I've, I've buried the words. I've lost the words. Where are the words? Here we go. So I'm thinking something that I can kind of like fold at a specific point that will make sense on both sides. How about we go, love is like a wild rose. So there'll be kind of an aspect of reveal on what the whole saying is. It won't be appreciated until somebody takes it out and opens it up. I think I've got all the scraps. So for this I need to glue it on and then wait till it dries before I fold it. I could even put it right between like and a. It might be... I think I want it up the top, or just wild rose. That's going to help disguise the fact that it's not perfectly straight too. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to wrap it round. I'm just going to pop those on there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Just like that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Cool. Just took me a bit to work out exactly what I wanted to do there. I thought wrapping it round would be a good idea. But I had placement issues because I didn't work it out beforehand. So just going to go with this so it'll still be like a reveal because you won't know the words are there until you take it out and open but it's all going to be on one side I hope it gets warmer again. I am full on in like winter stuff like singlet and stuff. Oh, don't put it upside down. Um, singlet and stuff and my hoodie and it's like, we're in summer. Like, give me some summer temperatures, please. Yeah, how cute is that? I think that is adorable. And then that just tucks up into our little tuck spot. There, I had a slight bit of glue sticking it closed there, but it should be good to go now. Ah, oh, isn't that pretty? Isn't that super pretty? And even now, you could still go in and glue in or bind in some pages. It's got a little bit of glue sticking on there. There we go. So I haven't folded it straight according to this pattern. That's all right. 
its writing surface. And on this other side, we won't do it now because we are kind of running out of time, but I will do this as a journal card up the right way in this tuck spot here. And it's already backed, so I'm just going to round the corners, put a focal image. How are we doing on time? No, we're out of time, so no, I will do that off camera. Um, but there it is. There's my little project using the freebie from the Junk Journal Studio. Remember, only available until the 29th of February. And then there's the ephemera kit, 39 pages of wonderful goodies uh, that is already up on Etsy that you can go and grab. And just stunning. I think well worth it. Hope you enjoyed this project. I hope you go along, support all the other creators who are providing freebies that all are part of this journal page kit until the 29th of February um, when it goes on Etsy. So go grab them guys, go support everybody, see what they make with this gorgeous, gorgeous kit and be inspired. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care everybody and I'll be back again real soon. Bye.